Take a seat. And you will moderate the next session and also introduce the panelists as well. I will start this time round, not the traditional way, because social entrepreneurs are about doing things a little bit differently. So instead of ladies first, we then start with gentlemen first. So I'll start with the gentleman on my extreme left hand side, and that is Mr. Zainal Abedin. Mr. Zainal Abedin, I will, I will start with very quick introductions so that you would have a chance to also talk to them and get to know them a little bit better. So Mr. Zainal Abedin is of course the Senior Minister of State for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He's also uh, Mayor of the Northeast Community Development Council District. And on top of that, he's also a very good friend, very gentle. He leads many groups in Singapore um, and is very well respected as a senior within the Singapore Parliament itself. Next to him is none other than Mr. Jack Lee. I don't know how to introduce this man because he keeps changing and transforming himself each time stronger, better than the last time and the last time was only 24 seconds ago. <laughs> Mr. Jack Lee, of course, we know him as a Hollywood celebrity. One of the most respectable action movie stars in the world. But as long as a man is a giant who had incredible amount of discipline to not just practice martial art, but to really make martial arts into an art form that communicates its messages to the rest of the audience. In getting to know him, from that of being a Shaolin Kung Fu star to that of a Hollywood celebrity and to now a philanthropist. And really, he's not just a philanthropist, I see him really as a social do-gooder. To now, I recognize that I was wrong all this while. He was really a thought and action leader. That, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce. Jack Lee. Really next to me, I think really needs some introduction because she has been with us at the Social Innovators Forum since 2006 when we first began. She has moderated sessions here. She has, you know, so many seats of social entrepreneurs in Singapore. She first came and got to know her as the director of the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurs, which, as you know, we, are, we have a joint project with them to search for the Social Entrepreneur of the Year Award in Singapore. And again, social entrepreneurs, at least those who are enriched with that spirit, doesn't quite stop there. And they go on to transform themselves and keeps getting better and better. Today, Pamela, is the director of the Skoll World Center. But over and above that, if you read her CV, you would find that she's also doing some adjunct professorship in various universities and also a founding director of Poland's. <laughs> Veronica Pondon is a really good friend of mine. If you look at her, you will know straight away that she's a lot younger than I am. But in terms of her achievements, She's just fantastic. I won't go into all the details, except to say that Veronica could have led a very, in Malay terms, sternang life, as in a very comfortable life, sitting back, relaxed. She has, well, that's where you see the first achievement already overwhelmed mine. Three children, you know, to start with. And she started life at a very young age, and she started life wanting to do good from the very beginning. And she runs, currently, a whole, a, 
a spectrum of businesses, all of which goes towards helping her to do good by getting street kids off the streets and giving them education. In particular, keeping drugs away, especially from the young people in Indonesia and the streets of Jakarta. And she is also an award-winning social entrepreneur, which you can read all about um, in the CV itself. And I think she also was the youngest recipient of a UN Prize. Uh, just, was it last year? In 2001, I wasn't even born yet. So there you have Veronica Condon. So ladies and gentlemen, we wanted to start the plenaries shaping our discussion somewhat uh, for the entire two to three days for it. And the first thing that um, came to mind when we did that was to go around to ask people you know, what they know about social innovation or social entrepreneurship, what were some of the issues that matters to them. And it became quite clear that there was some confusion about the subject matter of social innovation. And therefore, I have quite quickly put it in the program book itself, what social innovation is about, as according to Wikipedia. But that in itself may not be enough. So later on, I will get my plenary, my panelists, to give you some examples of what they are, to clarify the issue, and also uh, we would have a session later on uh, for you to ask some questions directly. So I want to pose my first question to our Senior Minister of States, can I just call you Zainal? Yeah? I'd like to just pose, you know, my first question to Zainal. What is it that we need to change? What is this thing about? Is there a case or is there a possibility that they are marginalized not because they were born in a certain way, but because our system itself marginalized them? For example, we say technology bridges, but yet it actually pushes people who are vision impaired into the margins even further because they cannot see or read and therefore they get disconnected from the knowledge world. There are technologies already available called universal web access or braille keyboards that can enable them to be integrated into the mainstream. But yet at the same time, we are seeing that such technologies are not rapidly being used. Governments don't exactly put a lot of emphasis into making sure that universal web access, which doesn't cost a lot more, is compulsory, except I think in the US. And so, is that something which we can do? Is this the kind of change that we should be looking at? Thank you, Benny. Um, <clears throat> that's a very loaded question. I'm not a technology man myself. But uh, let me try and answer that question in the way I know best, which is from my own personal experience of running the Mayor's Community Development Council. But uh, before that, if, with your permission, I'd like to say this. Maybe I may not get a chance another, another time. This is the closest I've come to Jet Li. <laughs> <laughs> I asked in fact, I was thinking of asking Penny whether I need a kind of a kung fu shield <laughs> in between. Uh, but knowing I'm sure where, you want to be integrated with your brother than to have the shield. And knowing where he comes from in terms of one foundation, in fact, it is about inclusivity. I think you're right, Penny, in the sense that we are talking about how do we go about being more inclusive. The world, as Penny says, you know, we have the technology. We have the wealth, but yet we are becoming further apart. And, it, and it's partly because people do want to feel as though they're inclusive. And again, if I may think this opportunity with what's happened in Mumbai, I think we all will agree with me when we say that we are all united as one. One foundation, one people against terrorism. I think we abhor what happened in Mumbai, and we all agree to that. Do we? Yes. You know, um, I've really been inspired by what Jet Li is doing in terms of his own one foundation and what he went through in terms of tsunami. And uh, well, that happened in 2004. And that reminded me about a book, I think a novel which was written about 1894. And I'm beginning to wonder whether there's something in that number four. I think for Chinese, 
maybe maybe especially Cantonese. And number four, as you know, something which they try to avoid. Take a seat. 